Do I have audio? Do I have audio? Yeah? Cool. Um, slides. Yay. All right, so I'm going to talk briefly about the new um, AutoML project that we have um, going on in, in Edge Duo. Um, who's familiar with AutoML as a concept? OK, great. And um, I'd just like to see um, how many people would consider themselves more, more on the machine learning side and more on the data science side. So uh, machine learning specialists and straight data science specialists. OK, great. All right. So what is AutoML? So AutoML is um, a set of technologies to automate part of the data preparation and model building pipeline. Um, and most, um, most AutoML projects um, that are out there, and I'll talk about a couple of them briefly, are really geared toward novices. So they're geared toward the big green button. You give them a data set, you get a predictive model out the other end, and you don't have any sort of way of um, of having feedback in the process. Um, so what we're trying to at uh, attack at H2O is actually both sides. So to help not only the pure novices, um, but also people that have um, strong data science skills and strong machine learning skills. Um, so some outside uh, AutoML projects you may have heard about that um, we take inspiration from are AutoSklearn, um, Autocompete, Teapot, um, Data Robot is a company that um, uses H2O, among other technologies, to do AutoML. Um, so there are a few of these out there. Um, and again, the target audience is really um, people that are novices, they're either software developers, business analysts, um, and they want a big green button. They have some data, they want a predictive model. And they don't really know anything about machine learning other than maybe how to spell it. Um, but we also want to help inter, uh, expert users by having interactive use and control and, and feedback. Um, so this um, is intended to help out the machine learning experts by doing kind of heavy lifting and, uh, and grunt work that they normally have to do in you know, tuning hyperparameters, in doing feature engineering, things like that. Um, and also um, bringing people that are novices to machine learning but are heavy on the data, uh, data statistics and data science side and help them be uh, better machine learning people. So what are the pieces of an AutoML system in general? <clears throat> and if you look at all those systems that I talked about, they all have various uh, portions of this. We have um, data cleaning, um, feature engineering and feature generation. We have feature selection, um, both for the original features and for features that are generated by the system automatically. Um, we have hyperparameter tuning for the models, and um, we've got, in some cases, um, ensemble generation, um, some smarter than others. Um, some of the systems do know ensemble generation. So we have some pieces that we've had, um, some of them for a while, some of them fairly new at H2O that kind of go into this, um, and there are some new pieces that are uh, being built right now. <clears throat> Um, ensembles, uh, stacking from Aaron Liddell, who's in, here in the audience, yay, um, have been around in eight, for H2O for two and a half years, something like that, two years. Um, but they've been um, only in R, only for R users. So we're bringing that um, into the back end so that stacking is available through um, Python and Sparkling Water, Scala, all of that. Um, we have, for the last six months or so, random hyperparameter search with automatic metric-based early stopping, which I put in in March, I think, or sometime in the spring. Um, there was some work early in the year um, on data set characterization and feature generation, feature engineering, um, some of which will be used. Um, and uh, we had an intern from Harvard. Harvard? Yeah? Aaron? Um, Abhishek was... Yeah, we had an intern over the summer who did an integration with the HyperOpt um, Bayesian hyperparameter optimization toolkit. And we're looking at bringing that inside of H2O. Um, current work that's going right now for um, AutoML is um, we have a version right now that does random hyperparameter search with parameter values that we got by hand tuning 140 data sets from the Open, OpenML project. Um, and then again, <clears throat> moving the ensembles into the back end, so we'll take the best out of those, out of those models that we build and ensemble them. 
Um, and we're also working right now on some basic meta-learning. So what this means is that um, we'll take those 140 data sets, and that number is growing over time. We're adding in the Chalearn data sets and Kaggle data sets. And we'll take your data set and look at which ones of those that we've seen before are the closest, um, according to various meta features. And using those hyperparameter vectors as starting points to tune your, your model. And the idea here is that the hyperparameter search process converges faster to a good model. Um, work that is uh, starting soon, feature selection. Um, so feature selection is very important for making your models train fast, um, and especially for um, handling generated features. And we'll talk about that more in just a moment. Um, feature engineering for IID data, and I'll get into some details about that uh, very briefly in a minute. Um, doing true smart Bayesian hyperparameter search, which means that um, the hyperparameter search tries to learn the hyperparameter space and how it relates to the, the error metric that you're trying to, um, to optimize. Um, and so should converge faster to a good model. Um, and um, then potentially feature engineering for non-IED data, data um, such as time series. So looking at things like um, logs where you have um, events in time and you want to know you know, what's the time from the, the nth call for this customer from the, the first call that they made? That's an important feature, right? And that's something that's not row independent. Um, and then uh, working with larger data sets. So the, um, most of the open source data sets that are out there are fairly small. And so it'll be important as we go through this process and iterate and add features to the system that we start using it on larger data sets. And primarily, that will be customer data sets um, from our own data scientists working with them at first, but then also opening it up to you. Know, you. <laughs> so, um, and then uh, something that I've just wanted for a long time, distribution guesser for regressions, because most people who are doing um, you know, black box um, auto ML, they don't necessarily know the distribution of their output data, and they could be um, just, you know, building to the wrong output distribution. Um, <coughs> so how will we evaluate our work, or how do we evaluate our work? So we've got public data sets from OpenML. We're starting with these 140 data sets that are um, classification data sets. Um, and then there are about, I guess, 20 from the Open, from the um, Chalearn AutoML Challenge that are also classification data sets. Um, we've got Kaggle data available, obviously, um, and then working with um, customer data. So the idea here is that, you know, as we're doing this evaluation, we have benchmarks to evaluate against. For the, um, the Chalearn competitions and the OpenML and the Kaggle, there are public, um, you know, kind of good models out there. People have been working on these data sets. And so we can evaluate how well we're doing against them and add features to the system accordingly. So going through a couple of the steps here, um, what do I mean by data cleaning? Kind of the obvious thing. So outlier analysis, um, sentinel value detection. Um, some of this is based on things like looking at histograms, but some based on heuristics, you know, looking for the, the standard kind of sentinel values. Um, NA handling, you know, H2O in the back end handles NAs really well, um, but it might be uh, advantageous to do smart imputation, things like that. Um, identifier detection, things like customer IDs, right, that you don't want to go into your model. Uh, feature generation, so we're looking at um, type-based heuristics for things like date and times, and transforms of numerics, and then interactions. So, um, you know, I, I don't know who was over at Brandon's talk over in the small room about the Kaggle competitions. There was a lot of discussion about generating, um, generating new features for feature interactions. So we'll be doing that automatically um, using a couple different techniques, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, feature generation with deep learning. Um, 
and um, clustering as well. So feature selection, there are a bunch of different ways that people do feature selection. There are a lot of papers on this. Um, mutual information is sort of a, um, a nonlinear correlation, you can think of it. Um, how, how much does one variable um, move around when the other moves around? And um, so we've got some code in there right now that measures this. Um, variable importance from training GBM models, from um, training deep learning models, um, doing PCA and looking at the first N uh, principal components. Um, and then feature selection for generated um, features, especially for um, interactions. You know, you're trying to do all the products of all the the pairwise products of all the numeric columns, for example, things like um, GLM with elastic net will pick out the ones of those that actually make sense really, really quickly because GLM trains so fast. <clears throat> so the feature selection um, landscape is, is pretty wide, and it might make sense to use different feature selection schemes for um, the original columns in your data versus columns that you're actually generating. Um, for hyperparameter tuning, again, right now we do random hyperparameter search with metric-based early stopping. It's been in there for quite a while now, I guess about six months. Um, hope people are using it. It's very useful. And um, so right now, again, we're building GBMs with hyperparameter values with random search, with values taken from these um, OpenML data sets. Um, and we're getting um, results just from that that are comparable to the, um, the performance of AutoEcho, which is kind of the old version of what auto-scoring was. Um, and we're right now adding a, a sort of nearest neighbor's warm start by um, taking clusters of the metadata for those data sets and starting the hyperparameter search at um, hyperparameter vectors that are close to what we think are your new data set. Um, and we're evaluating that right now to see if it's working well. Next step is adding Bayesian smart hyperparameter optimization. Um, automatic smart ensemble generation. So as I said, we're adding the stacking ensemble super learner stuff into the back end. Um, at first, we're going to be either ensembling all the models that we come up with or the top end models. Uh, but then looking at some other techniques. So some of the packages use things like greedy algorithms to add one model at a time um, and see where they start dropping off in performance. Um, there's, uh, you know, kind of the obvious thing to do with ensembling is to ensemble models that have uncorrelated residuals because you want models that actually perform differently from each other to ensemble together, um, this kind of thing. So we'll be looking at all of those. And then uh, possible future directions or things that we'd like to do are um, possibly um, being able to launch multiple concurrent H2O clusters so that you can go through this process much faster, um, build lots of models at the same time, um, free stuff for model training. So what this means is that um, we would train models part way and checkpoint them, which we can do with all the model types in H2O and then continue on with the ones that are, um, that are kind of at the leaderboard, at the top of the leaderboard, um, to try a whole bunch of things and then um, you know, filter out the ones that look good and continue training. Um, outlier analysis with user feedback and residual analysis with user feedback. Um, a lot of other things here in the futures. Um, so this is a project that has really just started a couple months ago and um, you know, we're really interested in hearing your feedback. I'd love, you know, for people to come up and talk to me about it afterwards if you're interested. Um, and uh, it's pretty exciting. So do we have any questions? Yes? Do you have ETA on the, uh, the uh, first beta version of, of AutoML? So, um, what we have right now is working. It's, a, it's pretty basic. It doesn't have the ensembling yet. Um, it's just the, the smarter GBM hyperparameter search. Um, and that's really, that code is running right now, and it's usable. 
Um, I'm not sure when we're going to release it. It'll probably be pretty soon, I would think. Um, I'd really like to get the stacking into the back end uh, before really calling that something that's AutoML, because right now it's just kind of glorified random search. Um, but I mean, the other thing that's nice about it is that the way that I've done the API, you can go as simple as just giving file name and response column, and that's it. And you get a model out the other end. Um, but also, you can add extra tuning parameters if you like. So. And you think that the stacking is going to be in the next month or two? I'm, I'm thinking because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on a project right now, which I don't want to go into the R stacking. Uh, super meta learning by rather wait, but I don't know how long will that be. Yeah, yeah. My plan is to have the stacking in base H2O in the next couple of weeks. Couple of weeks, okay. Great. Yeah, yeah. Other questions? Nothing? All right, well, thanks so much. Thank you.